so let's get right into it. I'm obviously talking about the new 2022 Pathfinder and uh, of course the Concept uh, QX60. Um, obviously Pathfinder is important to talk about because this will lay the foundation for the QX60. Uh, before we go forward, I just want to make sure to point out there that none of these images are my own images. These are all images I pull on the internet just to discuss and something like that. Um, any images go out to the respective owners, things like that. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Aside from that, yeah, let's just start talking about the cars and let's talk about the exterior first. So this, as you know, it's been about eight years since, uh, the, the newest Pathfinder along with the Infiniti JX35, which became the QX60 after one year. Um, it's been about eight years since those launched. So it's been quite some time, uh, other than very small, slight revisions here and there. They're the same car, the kind of jelly bean design that's not been, that was looked at favorably before, but um, well, sort of favorably by some people, but obviously has not aged well. It's been a while. So you can see how the looks of the car is here. The exterior here, as you can see, this is the old, these are 2020 models here, and this is the 2022. And you can see it's a big change, much more upright, uh, much more kind of aggressive looking. You can see much bigger grill right on the front when you're looking at the front of the car here huge grill now uh with big chrome accents i mean there was fairly big chrome here before but now it's big and bold uh this kind of black skid plate thing is gone now for, uh, it's not a real skid plate obviously although a lot of these pictures show this car is off-road when you're looking at the new pathfinder so i think they're trying to push for that off-road mentality on the car um, you can see that, you know, again, with things like looking at this faux uh, skid plate here, the lights obviously have changed significantly now. They are now kind of these, we're seeing a lot on the new Nissan SUVs, just kind of like uh, cut angular lights. And it looks like the fog lights have moved a little more inboard. The hood itself, it's got, you know, it had these kind of more uh, smoothed out uh, grooves to it. Now it's a little more aggressive, curves upward. Uh, the lights have moved from the corner of the A pillar right onto the door. And it's got like kind of this floating roof line that's going for it now. Um, also, the chrome strip that's here, it used to sit on top of the molding. Now it looks like the molding folds up and over the, uh, the chrome strip. You can see it over here more kind of giving, uh, kind of, it makes it look like it's taller than it actually is. The big thing, of course, is on the back as well, where you can see that the lights, which had these kind of, you know, angular lights that set on here again looked okay in 2013 2020 maybe not so much now are kind of these thinner more angular lights run right across the whole back and of course a huge pathfinder right across the back this is obviously the platinum all-wheel drive model so we're looking at the top of the line i don't know some models you see like maybe the pathfinder is not so big and bold on lesser models let's say s or sv models but that's obviously what we're looking at here and this huge plate on the back here as well for the diffuser um, obviously, I don't think not functional in any way, just more for our looks and so on. Um, also, noticeably here, uh, you know, the exhaust kind of curves up and in. You still don't see any exhaust there. It looks like it's right there or something, but it's not really no pronounced uh, exhaust tips. Now, going over now to the Infinity model, uh, this is, of course, the big one here. Now, this is just a concept, so I don't obviously think we're going to see any of this for real. But, um, well, I shouldn't say any of this. We'll see a lot of this, but it won't look exactly like this by any means. Um, you can see here, some of the things are kind of more realistic. Like, I could see, especially when you look at some of the modern cars now, these small angular lights, I can see that. And when we look at the Pathfinder, it's got these big, huge, bold lights on here, right? When we looked at the Pathfinder, the old one, it, had, it did have bigger lights on here. When the QX60, it did have the thinner, more angular lights. Still big, but more angular. So I could see that happening here. Uh, it's got bigger grill, huge grill, pretty much the same angle out and curves around. But uh, this is bigger and it's got more of a huge diving weave going for it. Same idea here uh, when you're looking at the hood. You now this kind of curved up and around. This has got kind of curves up and out and kind of taller. This is also going for a floating canopy design. But whereas the Pathfinder, you can see it's got a floating one and it's got a wrap around uh, kind of uh, rear glass past the, the C, C pillar and so on. Uh, when we're going over here, it kind of goes right across and out. And it's got this kind of chrome outline on it to kind of pronounce it a little more. Looks like it kind of dips out a bit. This is more angular than the Pathfinder. The Pathfinder is a more straight and upright. I don't know if that'll change for a production model, but you know, you can see that there. Uh, huge wheels on it. Uh, again, that same kind of curved. 
and the chrome lip uh, as opposed to the chrome sitting on the do actual doors there it's kind of sitting lower here uh, when we're again looking over at this is kind of the big thing here is on the rear as well you know you did have the lights and then a chrome strip across this one here has got the lights that run right across the back and big bold infinity going right there you can see just like the pathfinder the plate has moved from you know in the middle moves down to the bottom on the bumper and uh, one thing I've always liked in a lot of the Infinities is when they have the dual exhaust. This has a quad exhaust concept. I don't think that'll that'll kind of play forward. But I always thought this car would have a nice dual exhaust on it. Uh, not really functional, you know, it is an SUV, but it's kind of an Infinity thing. The uh, QX70 has it. The uh, QX50 had it. Like, they have it. Um, I always thought that was nice to have. So if they maintain a dual exhaust out of here, I think that would be a nice little change. Other than that, though, um, you can see it's kind of a big departure from what we've seen currently. All right, so now we're going to get to the wheel suspension and brakes. Uh, not too much is known about that other than a few a few little tidbits I found out here and there. Uh, first thing is it's got the pretty much the same suspension and brakes setup, it seems, from even through the 2020 models into the 2022 models. And I think that kind of you can kind of tell if you look at the brake system here, look at the QX60 uh 2019 model here and then you look at a 2022 concept you can see the brakes look pretty much the same so not a lot of changes there um suspension is supposed to be all the same suspension carryovers things like that uh you'll still have stock 18 inch wheels and then a 20 inch option which is kind of what runs right now both on the pathfinder and the qx60 so um not too much has changed in that regard uh one thing I, it does say is that it'll have a kind of a newer revised dual pinion electric power se steering system. So we'll see if that plays out pretty well. Wheel packages, as far as designs, I'm, it looks like we're going to get more or less the same idea. I mean, this is a concept, so don't expect this, obviously. But I've kind of five spoke various designs that we've seen um, across Nissan uh, Pathfinders and QX60s. I imagine we'll get the same idea. Now, this is kind of another big one here to point out in that um, for the drivetrain, we'll get more into the drivetrain after, but if you get the top end, like platinum model, all-wheel drive, um, you'll get actually seven different drive modes, which is more than the current model. Um, from near what I could tell, looks like you can drive on a cactus, you can drive on a tree. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so obviously... You know, this is kind of maybe, um, you know, desert terrain or sand terrain, things like that. This may be some slight forestry terrains. Um, this, I imagine, may be rain or something. I'm not sure. You guys, you may know more than me. I'm not sure. Uh, this is snow, obviously. This may be a sport mode or something to that effect. It's definitely not going to be a track mode. You're not going to have track mode on this car. But, you know, it's obviously got a, a racing flag. So I'm some, imagining sport. Then you have a trailering mode. Uh, this, I imagine, is the standard mode. And then this is pr probably some sort of uh, hill climb, hill descent mode as well. Uh, one thing I did notice too is now uh, the removal of the pedal brake, which has always been something on the Pathfinder and the QX60. It's got that, that pedal that you press, the foot pedal. So it looks like it's going to electric brake right now. So keep that in mind. That's an interesting little change there. All right, so let's get to the interior. And I found this to be the most intriguing. Although the exterior looks nice, more upright, more bolder. I found the interior because the interior was in big need of, of an update for sure. Um, you know, right now, when you look at it right off the bat, you'll see here the steering wheel now has gone away with the kind of that four spokes. And now it's got a three spoke. Well, kind of like this kind of uh, angular double spoke down here and then two other spokes. So different update there. Uh, now it's gone completely from this eight, very aged center console, center stack. Uh, you got that kind of floating tablet. Floating tablets are not my thing, but they're very popular. You know, starting with kind of the German cars, moved into a lot of other cars now. The Americans do it, Japanese do it, things like that. But I've never been a huge fan of it, but it's what's moved into now. It's got kind of these dual knobs on the screen. Uh, we'll see later on. It's actually still got that uh, dual kind of screen with the 360 camera. That's still going for it. You can see now mod changes here. The controls for the different modes, that's still where it normally is, along with the dual cup holders. There is now kind of this under cubby area now. 
uh, so you can actually have a little bit of extra storage. It's also got a wireless charging area and various chargers here. Uh, from what I've seen, this is the USB C, uh, USB, and this is USB C. Uh, you know, I've got all sorts of the kind of different little changes as the emergency brake. You can see it there that we saw in the QX60 path, uh, Pathfinders will both have that, I'm sure. Uh, so a lot of updates in the changes, the look, the layout. It's no longer this kind of old design with this old screen here. Um, it'll have a couple of different screen options. So I'm not sure uh, what it will directly look like, but it'll be an eight or nine inch option. This to me feels like the nine inch option. So maybe the lesser SRSV models may have a lesser screen, but um, yeah, that's definitely kind of a big step up. And here we get a little closer on the shifter. Gone is a lot of this, you know, the, the faux wood and stuff like that, the wood trim. It's gone to a more sleeker, elegant kind of look. Uh, hopefully it's not all just hard plastics. Hopefully nice materials are used. Uh, this you'll see after the heated and if you have cooled seats, they're now moved. They're up, up on the dash. Actually, all the heating controls are up there now. Uh, the shifter now, it's just kind of no longer this standard, you know, reverse neutral drive, like regular shifter. Instead, it looks like, uh, you know, fly-by-wire type shifter, things like that. Uh, maybe that's why they have the cubby underneath. So it is a big change in difference. This, this is actually a big um, clue to what's changing in transmission. We'll get to that right at the end. Um, but, uh, actually, you know what, why not we approach that right now? So kind of what's going on, let's, let's take a second and talk about the drive lines because I don't really have a picture for that. So now's a good way to, to segue. So first thing, the CVT, that is the Achilles heel of this car. If there's anything, I know the styling is kind of polarizing. Some like it, some don't, I don't mind it. Obviously I own a, a GX35, but, um, the styling has been kind of hit and miss. The big thing was the CVT. The CVT is the worst part of this car, and that is gone. The Jatco CVT is gone. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we're getting a nine-speed auto from ZF. So this kind of ties into that, right? This is a new transmission, different linkage, different everything. As we're talking about it, uh, you'll they haven't changed the engine, though. It's the same 3.5-liter VQ engine. Uh, 284 horsepower, 259 foot-pounds of torque. So no change on the engine whatsoever. Front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. There was rumors. I remember hearing early on that this was going to change back to a rear-wheel drive platform like the older Pathfinders, which also believed that then the QX60 would have been rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. Uh, that hasn't happened. It is still, from the looks of it, going to still be all-wheel drive. Um, sorry, front-wheel drive with an all-wheel drive option. What is interesting, though, is through the new nine speed auto it can shift up to 50 percent of the power to the rear if needed uh so it is kind of more of an active all-wheel drive system or semi-active uh and we talked about the seven modes so that all ties now back into that transmission uh different modes that it controls it's not the cvt doing it, it's an actual automatic that's controlling it so it should be more precise not so jerky and jaggy when you switch between what do we have? Uh, I think three modes. One, two, I think three or four modes currently on the QX60 in the Pathfinder. It shouldn't be all jerky. It, sometimes it is now. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> all right, back to the interior. So now you can see here some more shots. Uh, over up here, this is the current interior. And you can see here some of the more close up designs and the panoramic roof. Uh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, so one thing to note on the roof now, I have not seen, it says it has an optional panoramic roof. I don't know if we're getting another panoramic roof aside from this one. This is technically a panoramic roof. So, but you, on the cars now, there's, uh, if you have the models with it, some have just a sunroof and some have a sunroof and then a kind of a division and then a separate panoramic, fixed panoramic roof. This looks like just a sunroof and panoramic roof. I don't know if there's going to be a second panoramic or if this is just what we're getting now. I'm not sure yet, but this is what I've seen. And since the pictures indicate that it's a platinum model, I feel like this is what's going to be because I didn't see a second like on the upper part of it and like another glass roof or anything. It looks like it's just the one and then the front part opens or slides back, I should say. Uh, over here now, we can see how the old one looked. It had all these old buttons. Very, very like small screen. The vents at the side, very, very old, very old. So now... 
Uh, now we've gotten to this new, like I said, tablet, and you can see the 360 camera, backup camera, all in working view. Buttons are pretty much the same. You have like a back button, which you can see is up here. You've got a camera button. Uh, I don't see on this model up here, but I know on my GX35, it's got a camera button. Map button, which you can see there. So the buttons have remained the same. They've just kind of moved, even the, the screen dimming slash shut off button. That's over here. So some changes. Uh, over here, you can see now, the, this is kind of an interesting move. The heated and cool seats are now directly on the panel right below the screen here. Uh, so that's not so bad, but I found this interesting. The heated seats move to move from the left of the driver now over here. So there's a little bit of a reach over, but not a, not a big deal. Um, other than that, heating controls look all pretty standard. Um, it's got, you know, dual climate, I imagine, uh, cause you can see the sync button and everything. So all that's there. The AC buttons here, kind of weird to have the AC slightly out of reach like that, but Hey, not a big deal. Got to put it somewhere, I suppose. Uh, so you can see a lot of changes have happened here going now to the interior. Now this is interesting because it's got now a full digital dash gone is this really old cluster with the, you know, the speedometer and the tachometer and all your lights and this kind of little mini screen. It's not a full screen here. What I do find interesting though, is it does say that the digital dash is available on the platinum models, which is clearly a platinum model. So the question is, is what is the lower mouth SSV? What are they getting? I'm not sure about that yet. So for Pathfinder owners, don't know what you're going to get. If you get like a lower S or SV model, this is platinum. Uh, I imagine though the infinity models will get this by default. I'd be shocked if there's, uh, a base infinity that doesn't have this or something like for the QX60. So I expect to see this across the board for the infinity lineup. One thing to note, uh, this is a pathfinder, but this has paddle shifters. So will the QX60 have paddle shifters? No idea. I'm going to guess. Yes. I would see, uh, say, why not? Actually, I'll show you why in a second. But um, that'll be interesting. It's now you can actually shift through your gears, uh, all nine of them, I suppose. <laughs> so that's there now too. Now for the interior, here is a big, some big changes here. So first off, we're going over here. You can see it's got the USB, USB-C, it's got a charger, and then your heater controls. This is all fairly standard. Main thing is you got the USB-C plug here now, it looks like. Um, here now is the big thing. We'll talk about it a little more in a sec, but here you can see the captain's chairs. Before it was three seats, uh, three seats here. So two, the front captains, then a bench here, and then another bench in the back with two seats. So seven seater. Here you can see now you've got the two seats here and then two seats here and then the bench. So the bench back here now is now a three seater. That's kind of interesting. Now they say you can put a four by eight sheet of plywood, and the, you know, the, the magical number, the four by eight and lay it across the back. So this is obviously slightly bigger in the back. Um, but is it enough to put three seats across? I don't know. I've carried seven grown adults in my JX 35 and we all fit. No problem. Um, however, I, I didn't see much room for anyone else in the, that last two rows. So I don't know how that's going to work. Time will tell. We'll see when the car comes out. Uh, here you can also see though, now, instead of it, because it was just two seats, it was a 50, 50 split. Now it's, it looks like a 60, 40, or maybe 70, 30 split. I believe it's 60, 40 though. So it's definitely got a different split on here now. Um, and of course, now that they have two captains here, um, there is a kind of a center console area where you could put your drinks or a little cubby hole, things like that. There you can see the panoramic roof a little bit more over there as well. So now let's go over to the QX60. So this is the QX60 and you can see, although there's similarities on the interior, it is also very different. So this of course is the same aged idea that we've seen in the QX now on the Pathfinder, the heater controls are up here, down here on the Infinity, the controls for the different modes are over here as well. All that's pretty much the same. Here, the layout's pretty much the same idea. Here you've got the controls for the different modes. It looks like I only see five buttons here, five modes, and it looks like a center button of some sort. The knob looks a little different as well. So I'm not sure if that'll be different. Electric parking brake, that's all there. Um, 
And the shifter is all pretty much the same. I believe your wireless charger will be here. I don't see why that would be absent from the Infinity model. Uh, and then you have the controls here. Now you'll notice it's a little more, oh, far more simplified on the Infinity than it is on the Pathfinder. Less buttons, looks like a more touch touch dial or something. Could be touch screen, maybe, uh, um, you know, uh, completely touch as opposed to the, the couple of dials. I do see there's a knob here that you can't see. It's kind of the steering wheel blocking it. So it looks like three knobs. Uh, this here, if you, the big thing here is this screen is a huge screen and goes end to end, much bigger than the, uh, in, uh, the Pathfinder, right? So I imagine of course, again, we'll have the split, the 360 camera, backup cam, you know, the usual stuff now, but definitely much, much bigger screen here. Heat and the heater vents are all down here now. And here, I don't know if you guys can tell, but to me, it looks like I see paddle shifters here as well. So I believe the QX60 will have paddle shifts. Obviously ni a nice interior color as well. So hopefully this carries over, same cubby hole, things like that. Uh, looks like a little area here, maybe speaker or something, not sure. So uh, the last thing we'll talk about is the, uh, the receding arrangement. I did allude to it a bit before. This is an infinity, this is the new Pathfinder. So just the last thing to kind of touch on here, the Infinity and the Pathfinder of old, two seats in the back, three seats across, two seats here, seven seats in total. Here you can actually see the one sunroof and then the panoramic roof in the back for the for the Infinity. So for the Pathfinder, you're going to have three seats here. You can see three headrests, one, two, three. And then you'll have your two seats here. Now this, I don't know how they'll arrange it or how the options will be, but there will be either the option for a bench or the captain chairs. I'm not sure if it's an extra option or how it works or how it's selected. That information hasn't been released yet, but you can actually have it now as an eight seater. So you can actually have two, three, and three, or you can have the two, two, and three, your option. But uh, yeah, this is a little bit of a change and departure here. Uh, other than that, I imagine kind of that whole thing that the Pathfinder and the QX60 were known for, for having like, the ability to have a baby seat and have it fold forward, things like that. I'm hoping all that remains. It's a nifty little feature. Um, also, you can see here what I'm talking about. One big panel roof. No other glass back here. Uh, this stretched almost all the way back, covered everyone in the back. This one now ends at the second bench. So it will be interesting to see. I don't know if there'll be another roof. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much it here. Um, aside from that, I'll just mention there's a few other additional things I've, that I didn't have pictures of, but I'll mention it. So number one is that uh, there will be an option apparently for a 10.8 inch heads up display. Um, those who've seen some of my videos had noted that I actually had put installed an aftermarket heads up display in my car and it's fantastic. So it's nice to see that we're finally getting one on the car, even on the Pathfinder. So I imagine they'll come on the QX60 as well. Um, you'll, there's some 13 speaker bow system. Uh, you'll get navigation as usual. Uh, the second row will be heated seats. Uh, third row will not. That's pretty standard. Uh, and uh, power tailgate, that's going to be, um, that's normal as well. So that remains. Um, I don't know. I know that the models, you have a buttons on the side to lift and lower these seats. Uh, because of the change in layout, I don't know if that changes. But um, I don't foresee it. But, you know, it may. So keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, aside from that, you can see lots of change, just analyzing the photos. So much of change in these cars. Um, there is, I, I would love to have seen a different engine, maybe a 3.7 liter uh, engine or something like that in there. Um, a little more kick and oomph. Uh, I know a lot of people like the old school body on frame, but let's be real, body on frame is not a big seller, right? It, it's... People don't buy it. I know they're great and they're great for off-roading, but Pathfinder is no longer off-roading. And since the Q, if there wasn't a QX60, I could see Nissan maybe bringing the Pathfinder back, but the QX60 will never be off-roading. And since they have to share platforms, I think by default, it'll just be a grocery getter as always. But um, yeah, aside from that, looks like a wonderful car. I am uh, going to hopefully be able to get my hands on one to test drive and see how it feels both the Pathfinder and I'm hoping in QX16. If I do, I would love to put out a video on that. So I'll keep you guys posted uh, when it does come out of my area. Uh, aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.
Thank you everyone for watching. I do appreciate all the support out there. Uh, don't forget to throw a like on that video if it helps you, if you found the information useful, anything like that, make sure you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, help the channel grow, and hit the notification if you want to see more of my videos. If you dislike the video, that's okay, no problem at all, but don't be a troll, all right? Uh, make sure you put why in the comments. I mean, maybe I missed something, maybe I got something wrong, maybe there's something you feel better or you didn't like how I filmed, whatever it is, put it in there. I make these videos to help people out, so I can only make it better if I get the feedback, but I need the feedback. Just don't be trolling, all right? Uh, otherwise, if you have any other comments, feel free to do so. I answer questions whenever I can. Um, if you want to add something on there, if you have a helpful tip that maybe I didn't cover, I didn't even know about, make sure to put that in the comments as well. I want to thank everyone, and I will see you all next video.